Hi, welcome to the Leaderomic Show. Today we have with us Professor Peter Cochrane. Uh, Peter is one of the world's most respected and sought after speakers in the areas of technology, change, and the future effects of change on corporations and individuals. Uh, Peter is also the former head of research uh, at British Telecoms. Uh, thank you for coming, Peter. Pleasure. Great privilege having you. You know, um, one of the areas that you are very passionate about is obviously in the area of change and technology and innovation. Tell us, what fuels this passion of yours? All through my life, I've seen improvements in everything. My life has improved and so has everybody else's. Mm. And in the area of work and what I do, yeah. I've just become more and more capable because of the technology. I'm able to do 10 times more work a year than I could do 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I look slightly over the horizon, I see even more technology. And it's very exciting yeah. because I think our partnership with the machines, which mm. is just starting, is a new phase. Yeah. And so when you talk about new phase, so we're talking about, we're really looking forward to something that is really different in the future. What, what kind of trends do you foresee with the whole innovation phase moving on? It depends on what sector we look, but if we look for everyday things, mm -hmm. uh, the rollout of sensors in our networks is going to be really a transformation. Mm -hmm. So imagine uh, you go to the doctor's surgery yep. today and he takes a blood sample or a swab, it goes off to a laboratory, uh, a report is written and a week later he gives you a call yeah, results in that. and he says you have or have not got something wrong. Mm -hmm. Now imagine a world where you go to the doctor's surgery, he takes out a nano sensor, he takes a sample of blood or saliva yeah. and in five minutes he mm -hmm. says I need to give you an injection. Hmm. It looks like you've contracted malaria or something. <laughs> yeah. how, how much better would that be? Yeah. Uh, in the one to two weeks when something is being diagnosed, people yeah. get very ill yeah. or not. Yeah. So that's just one area. Yeah. But I, I look at um, things that have changed us in the last five years, yeah. like social networking. That's right. So that sort of thing is interesting. Mm -hmm. And we understand about the sociology of people, yeah. but we know nothing about the sociology of things. Mm. So here's a question. Why is my mobile phone with yours mm. today at this moment? What's the implications? So I think in terms of how do we leverage the metadata yeah. about our lives? Yeah. That's what excites me. Yeah. That's where there is a lot of business. Yeah. So we're talking about a lot of change that is happening in the area of technology and how, how do you think it affects even the whole area of politics and uh, education? Well, one of the unfortunate things that happened around about the Reformation, mm. <clears throat> we, the European Reformation that is, uh, education was put into silos. Mm. And, and so you had physics, chemistry, biology. Yeah, that's right. Mathematics. Actually, there is only science. Mm. So in a world that's becoming more complex, that's becoming multidisciplinary, mm. I think the thing that's exciting about the technology is that if we can give people a fairly general education, yeah. then the technology allows us to get the specialist information yeah. online wherever we are. And suddenly, we can be an expert on something in minutes. Mm. That kind of thing is going to transform everything from science, engineering, yeah. management, yeah. medicine, everything. Mm. Right. That's interesting. Now, obviously, one of the, the key things, even for yourself, you are, you are thinking as an innovative leader. You're always thinking change, yes. always thinking what, what cannot be done today can be done tomorrow. And you have that mindset of being a very innovative leader. Um, how do leaders actually adopt that kind of mindset in their leadership on a day-to-day -day basis? That's a, a really good question. Um, I think that there is a great tendency to focus on today's problem. Hmm and today is always today, uh, and not look at tomorrow. And, and that is a recipe for yep. things going badly wrong in a business. Yep. For sure, you have to look after the business, That's you right. have to look after the people and the customers, but you also have to think, 
how do I take this business to the next phase? That's and it right. depends upon the business. Mm -hmm. So I ask the question all the time, this piece of technology, if mm -hmm. I was to use it, how would I benefit? Yeah. If I'm not going to benefit, then perhaps I shouldn't consider using it. Mm. But if I can see a great benefit from a technology, why am I not adopting it? Why am I not changing? Yeah. And if you ever stop doing that, I think that you will see your business go down. Yeah. I think that you will no longer be successful. Yeah. Because far from slowing down yeah. and becoming less competitive, mm. it's going the other way. Yeah. So in a world that's more competitive, that's international, that's networked, where change is faster, mm. I think you have to pay attention mm. to the things that are beyond just today, yeah. just the bottom line, just yeah. the balance sheet. Yeah. And for the, for the average leader out there, and that's it's always a challenge, we talk about change and innovation, everybody seems to mentally agree with it, I need to change and yes. we need to do things differently. <clears throat> but somehow when it comes to a day-to-day -day execution and you're in the business, and, and things are going on well. And the human nature is that you tend to be, just complacent. be complacent and say, yeah. let's, let's not rock the boat. And yeah. How do you help a leader break well, out of that, that, that <clears throat> mindset? I can only tell you what I do. And that is, I attend five really good, thought-provoking conferences every year mm. around the world. I meet with other business leaders yeah. and uh, other thinkers and I am always challenging the base assumptions. Mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about what could I be doing? Yeah. Uh, how could I improve? How could I make a better contribution? Mm. And um, that thinking out of the box uh, is encouraged if you travel, if you talk with other people. Mm. Well, that's interesting. I mean, someone of your, your caliber and the experience that you have and you still take time to attend talks and programs, you know, that, that shows a real um, hunger to learn and to develop. Oh, yes. How, how important is that for leaders? You might find this very paradoxical, mm. but I like to attend conferences where I know nothing. Mm. If I attend a conference where I know about the subject, then the education, the information, yeah. change for me is very expensive. Now, if I go to a conference where I know very little, yeah. then I get a huge amount of input yeah. and it is worthwhile. Yeah. So I go to conferences when I'm invited, but I also attend conferences to learn about other sectors. Yeah. And uh, I can now have to sort of uh, admit mm. that when I was at university, I went to the courses that I was supposed to go to, but I went to other courses as well that I thought were interesting. <laughs> so the university I went to yeah. uh, did not keep a tally on the number of students in the yeah. room, so I would go and take extra courses without telling anybody. Yeah, great. And you're talking about universities and education. What's your take on the current way we educate our young people? And are, are we doing the right thing, you think? I think we're doing absolutely the wrong thing in education. We're educating children and, and students for a time that's gone. Mm. We're educating from the past. Um, we specialize them far too early. We put them in a straitjacket. Right. And in actual fact, we should be broadening them and we should be making them think about the future and their innovation because increasingly we're in a, a multidisciplinary world. Yeah. We're not just talking about IT, we're talking about IT applied to economics right. or to um, medicine mm. or to engineering. So mm. we need skills that go across several boundaries of science and art um, all the time. All right. So why would you put somebody into just a physics channel or right. a chemistry channel? So you think we specialize too early? Or? Too early. Um, I, I look at it like this. Uh, if you look at the physical world and you, you have a microscope that mm. says physics, it gives you one view. Yeah. If you have a, uh, a microscope that says chemistry, it gives you a different perspective. Right. Um, in a complex world, very often, mm. you need to apply biology, chemistry, physics, yeah. mathematics, all at the same time. Yeah. And by the way, uh, if you want to 
get a, a rendition, mm -hmm. you need an artist That's to right. make a picture mm -hmm. or an animation. So we need skills that go across many borders. Oh, that's interesting. Thank you. Now, um, with your busy schedule, I, I notice that you still find time to really enjoy a variety of activities, uh, like doing it yourself, uh, swimming, cycling, and we're talking yeah. about sailing and fly fishing uh, yeah. uh, a while ago. How important are these activities for you personally? How do you actually find time to do them? Well, it's, it's interesting. I've had a very concentrated life uh, in science and education. And, and, and mathematics and engineering and if you keep working mm. and working uh, there's a tendency to become dull uh, you, you get exhausted and uh, my choice of hobbies and pastimes um, is less than subtle mm. when I'm fly fishing I can't think about work mm -hmm. when I'm sailing I have to concentrate on the boat I, I pick things that are interesting yeah. Uh, require skill, but I don't think about work mm -hmm. when I'm doing them. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is, a lot of the problem solving, the detailed problem solving, seems to happen in here sort of subliminally. You, 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 you reach a, some technical uh, problem impasse mm -hmm. and you think about it and you almost forget about it, and all of a sudden the solution pops into your mind. Yep. Um, so I, I do a lot of that. I mean, one of my hobbies is solving really difficult problems. Okay. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> and it might seem an obscure thing to do, but um, they're very interesting problems. And uh, there are things that you think, if we only had an answer to this, we could change things. And uh, I find all of that exciting. Great. You know, it, it's, um, it's kind of like living a, a balanced kind of life as well, that you yes. have different yes. facets. And that's, that's important for some of our viewers here because uh, we live in such a fast-paced uh, society. It's all about results, results, results. And, 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 and this part of this whole balance is, is critical, you think, for a leader? Oh, yes. Uh, let me tell you the most important job I had. Mm. It was being a father mm. and being a husband. Yeah. Um, that is a huge responsibility. So. I took those jobs uh, very seriously. Could I now do them better? I think so. Mm. Um, but when you have children, when you have a family, the next big important thing you do is employ people. That's right. So those are the key things. Now, uh, the business, uh, the sector, the country, humanity, yeah. Uh, are all on your plate too. You mm -hmm. have a, a wider responsibility mm -hmm. and it is about getting things in perspective. Um, very often when things are going badly wrong, uh, people don't ask the right questions. That's so right. it's uh, interesting to reflect that when things are going badly wrong, is it life-threatening? Yep. Are you going to die? Mm -hmm. What were you worried about last <laughs> year at this time? Yep all those kinds of things. Yep. Um, very often, as a leader, the mm -hmm. onus is upon you to find a solution. Yep. The thing to remember is you're not absolutely on your own. Mm -hmm. One, you have a team. Two, people want to help. And three, if you've been wise, you've also created a huge network of colleagues and friends that you can call upon. That's right. And, and that, I think, is a hugely powerful and underrated resource. Great. So I, I network a lot. Yeah. Good. Right, so thank you, Peter. It's a great privilege having you on the show. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, we've been talking to uh, futurist professor uh, Peter Cochrane. Thank you for joining us on the show.